How's it going? Good, yourself? Yeah, good. <laughs> You're very loud. Maybe I'll turn you down. Yeah, turn me down a bit. That's it. Oh, yeah. Good, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you made sure you are on time, eh? <laughs> Everything connected and working and going? Yes, certainly is. Do you look like you've lost a bit? Doesn't feel like it. Hope so, though. It doesn't feel like it. No, I still can't see my toes. <laughs> Hard work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It won't take, won't take you long. Yeah. Get it all done. Yeah. Now the kids? Yeah, they're all good. Mm -hmm. Very good. They're all good. Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah, a bit tired. I started exercising this week. So uh, four Ks every morning. So walking. Walking on the treadmill. Why don't you go out in the street? Oh, it's too cold. It's like ten degrees, <laughs> nine degrees here. Uh, Amy loves it. She gets up at six or something. And uh, Yeah, once you get started you love it. Mm. Yeah. Well, you can do it in the night time instead, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Walk yeah. home from work. I do. Oh, yeah, not that far, though. No. Why? Because that's probably about <laughs> 20, 10 k's. <laughs> I don't think it's that far, is it? Well, it takes 10 minutes to drive. It's like a long stretch on that highway. Oh, yeah. Oh. You can walk down Richmond Road. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. It seems different when you're in a car, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Get my glasses. You ready to go? Yes. <coughs> Welcome, brothers and sisters. Here we are again. Off the cuff. And we're, tonight we're going to look up two words and we're going to see what Yahushua is saying to us through the scripture. And uh, it's very interesting what he has to say to us as a body. There are things that the body needs to know and needs to realise um, what is actually going on and what he wants. So it's uh, very interesting tonight. So the first word we're going to look up is ribs. That's Daniel 7, Daniel chapter 7. It's page 591, Mark. That helps a bit. Yes. So ribs. It's interesting about where the ribs are placed in the body mm. and why they're placed in such a place, why it's like that. Then we have the hands and the arms in front of those ribs, don't we? Yeah. It comes in front of the ribs. And it's there for like a reason, isn't it? Mm. Wow. Like to protect something. Mm. And the next word is what it's protecting, heart. Okay. So the heart's in the middle of the body. Mm. It needs to be protected. And the heart is um, also the intellect. So we actually think from the heart. That's how the body really works, from the heart. Because that's where Yahushua comes into our heart. It's circumcised. And he speaks to us from our heart. Amazing, eh? Mm. Let's go on. Chapter 7, Daniel. In the first year of Belshazzar, sovereign of Babel, Daniel had a dream. What's the clicking? The desk. I'll come over here. I'll lean back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. So in the first year of Belshazzar, sovereign of Babel, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head on his bed. 
Then he wrote down the dream, uh, giving a summary of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I was looking in my vision by night and saw the four winds of the heavens stirring up a great sea. So the sea speaks of? Nations. Yeah. And four great beasts came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I was just looking until its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and it was given a man's heart. That sounds like something from Babylon, doesn't it? Mm. The beast with the wings and it's got a head of a man's heart. So here's Daniel in the time of um, Nebuchadnezzar, isn't it? Mm. And it's Belshazzar, the first year of Belshazzar. He's a continuance from Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, where, where Israel was exiled. And so it's very amazing that Daniel's getting this vision at night Way back then, in the first, the first uh, ruler of the world, and we're getting this message from him, from Yahusha, to say something to us today. Yeah, mm -hmm. and see another beast, a second like a bear, and it was raised up on one side and had three ribs. There's the word ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. So um, <clears throat> that beast, another beast is a, a ruler. Could be Egypt, Persia, probably Persia. After this I looked and saw another like a leopard which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and rule was given to it. So what beast do you think that one was? No idea. Probably Greece, maybe. After this I looked in the night visions and saw a fourth beast, fearsome and burly, exceedingly strong, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and crushed and trampled down the rest with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Well, that would be Rome, wouldn't it? Yep. I'd say so. I was thinking about the horns, then saw another horn, a little one, coming up among them. And three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots before it. And see, eyes like the eyes of a man were in this horn and a mouth speaking great words. I was looking until thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair on his head was like clean wool. His throne was flames of fire, its wheels burning fire. A stream of fire was flowing and coming from forth from his presence, and a thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and the judge was seated, and the books were opened. So isn't that interesting? There's four rulers there. It tells you as we go further on, four world rulers. And there we have more or less the scripture, the history of the scripture, don't we? I was looking then because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking. I was looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning fire. So it's like the full story, isn't it? That we know in these last days in the Revelation. And the rest of the beasts had their rule taken away, but a lengthening of time was given to them for a season and a time. It was looking in the night visions. I was looking in the night visions and saw one like the son of Enosh. See that little B? Yeah. We go down to the bottom of the page. Son of Enosh. 
This Aramaic term is similar to the Hebrew Ben Adam, but not the exact equivalent of it. However, this Aramaic term indicates the same one, mm -hmm. meaning Yahushua, of course. So he was coming with the clouds, and you notice there's a, a, um, a line down the side of this, yes. which is prophecy to come. Mm -hmm. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And to him was given rulership and preciousness. That word's interesting how they put that there, isn't it? Preciousness. Mm. And a reign that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His rule is an everlasting rule which shall not pass away and his reign that which shall not be destroyed. The next chapter. As for me, Daniel... My spirit was pierced within my body and the visions of my head alarmed me. So he's seen all this and he's pierced to his heart and he's alarmed. We're not, are we? Because we can completely understand what's happening, can't we? There's a whole history of what Yahuwah is going to do. I drew near to one of those who stood by, verse 16, and asked him the certainty of all this. So is this really real? And he spoke to me and made known to me the interpretation of the matters. These great beasts which are four are four sovereigns which rise up from the earth. Then the set-apart ones of the Most High shall receive the rain and possess the rain forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired for certain certainty concerning the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, very fearsome with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, crushed and trampled down the rest with its feet. And concerning the ten horns, that were on its head and on and of the other horn that came up before which were which three fell this horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke great, great words whose appearance was greater than his fellows i was looking and this horn was fighting against the set apart ones and was prevailing against them and here, the next verse, we have a prophecy. Verse 22, until the Ancient of Days came and right ruling was given to the set-apart ones of the Most High and the time came and the set-apart ones took possession of the rain. So it's like what's going to happen, isn't it, with a um, tribulation. What, what's the other word for tribulation? Pressure. The pressure. You're very loud. Really? Is, that, is it all right? Yeah. I'm not talking loud. Turn your volume down a bit. Maybe it's the volume on this. That's it. That's it? Yeah. It's better. <laughs> it is now, I think. I couldn't understand where it's coming from. You know me with computers. Verse 23, this is what he said, the fourth beast is the fourth rain on earth, which is different from all other rains, and it devours all the earth, tramples it down and crushes it. Now this is the scripture. So did you know that the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, the fourth beast is the fourth reign on earth, and that's going to come to an end, of course, which is different from all other reigns, and it devours all the earth. Devours all the earth. Well, look what China's doing. You know, they're devouring all the 
goodness of the earth. Look what they've done to the food. They're devouring all the goodness of the earth. Tramples it down and crushes it. That's actually what's gone down. You can see it. What's yeah. happening in these days, eh, mate? Oh, yeah. Mm. Verse 24. And the ten horns are ten sovereigns from this reign. They shall rise and another shall rise after them. And it is different from the first ones. And it humbles three sovereigns. Now, we're looking at the ribs, aren't we? Rib, we found out what the ribs do. They're protecting the heart because it's a vital organ. Lots of things happen from the heart in the body, don't they? And it speaks words against the Most High and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. So this is what the Jesuits are doing. Yeah. And it intends to change appointed times. This is what they have done. That was constant time, wasn't it? Yeah. It's the beast, which is still going. Appointed times, it says C at the bottom. Yeah. This is another word for festivals, appointed times. Right. Uh, and change appointed times and law is D. Changing the law amounts to lawlessness. Read in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 12 about the lawless one and the lawlessness which would take over. Indeed, it has already taken over in the set-apart place and also about Messiah's judgment upon the lawless prophets and the lawless believers. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 12. You want that? Yep. Let no one deceive you in any way. What does that tell us is going to happen to us? Going to get deceived. Yeah, remember the pressure? They're trying to wear out the saints. Mm -hmm. So if anyone says anything to you or comes at you, with things that aren't in the Torah, the body has to realise not to accept it. The body has to realise there's a warfare going on and the warfare is for our hearts, the heart, all the time. This heart comes in. Let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first and the man of lawlessness. See, A, let's go down to the bottom, A there. Some texts read sin, the man of sin, instead of lawlessness. This man might be the same one we read of in the prophecy in Yesha, Yahoo 14.12. Hillel, meaning the shining one, the sovereign of Babel, Note that the counterfeit one and the counterfeit worship exposed in this chapter centres around lawlessness. Most probably this is the same one set up in a set-apart place of which Messiah prophesied in Matthew 24, 15. This prophet, prophetic passage clearly says that lawlessness, the Daniel, which the devil sowed in the messianic belief, would take over and has taken over. Now, where was the Darnell sowed? Well, probably not much. Just... Now, where it says there, 
Where was the Darnell Fode? Probably before Constantine. Oh, yeah. um, this passage. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The Darnell was devil so in the or oh, where in the messianic belief. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you said when. Where in yeah, messianic belief. In the messianic belief. That's in us. Yeah. This Darnell has been sown in us. Mm. And where would it have been sown? Well, in yeah. our heart. Yeah. Mm. Look at that. Yeah. See? So this is why the bride has to be cleansed. This is why the blood bride has to have the wrinkles and spots ironed out. Mm. Right. So let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Elohim in the dwelling place of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. And this has already happened this has already happened. This was written way back 2,000 years ago and this has happened now. The Pope sits in that chair, doesn't he? The black Pope. Verse 5, do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? And now you know that what restrains for him to be revealed. Sorry, and now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work, only until he who now restrains comes out of the midst. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. So that's the same sort of thing as Daniel was saying, isn't it? Mm. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood. So there's going to be miracles and all sorts of things go down. And with all deceit of unrighteousness, that's why we're not to let no one deceive you. In those perishing, with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth. B, the bottom, truth is contrasted with lawlessness, sin, falsehood, deceit, delusion, unrighteousness. That is lawlessness. Mm. This is rampant. This Darnell is rampant in the messianic belief. That is why... There is so many arguments and problems going on because they don't face the complete truth of what they're doing and saying. Yeah? Mm. So the body isn't honest. And I say that in love and we need to come to the place where we're going to be honest about everything we do and say. We're going to fess up and face up with each other. This thing that Phyllis has got going, there seems to be a lot of Messianic believers responding and they're saying all sorts of things and there's some in there that want to sell their wares and everything. And Adam's put one in there that, you know, be nice to each other and we don't want, you know, people using each other to sell stuff, you know. But they're not listening to what Adam said. They continue and they show their wares, what they're selling. So it's just for relationship. It's not to take advantage of people. And this is how the messianic belief is at the moment. Not in everyone, but it's still rampant. And Yahushua's dealing with all this. But these things need to be said to the body you know, in fellowship so that we understand the standard 
that Yahushua wants for each and every one of us. He wants genuine, real, honest, from the heart, truthful. Now the heart of man is desperately wicked and evil above all things. We are all unclean, every one of us. We're not at that stage where Yahushua has made his bride clean. And we have to come to that place. So we have to be patient with each, each other. But we need to know that this Darnell isn't sowed in the world. It's sown in the messianic belief. Not in the Christian belief, not in Islam, not in Hindu, but in the messianic belief. Yeah? Interesting. Isn't it interesting when you look at it like that? And out of that, he's going to form his bride, those that will put off the ways of the world and will take Torah seriously and live the Torah no matter what they get accused of. They will stand on Torah. This is the sort of people he's looking for. And we need to push ourselves to understand what he's saying, to get to the place for him where we will set ourselves aside and let him come in and take over completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Right, verse 10, And with all deceit and unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth, Love to tell the truth. Love. You know, the Darnell loves to lie. And that Darnell is sown in all of us. We love to lie and deceive and hurt to save ourselves, to make ourselves better than what we are. But we need to look at what we are in order for them to be saved. <clears throat> Verse 11. For this reason, Elohim sends them a working delusion for them to believe the falsehood. See at the bottom there, number C, it says an alarming fact. Mm. Now, he's not talking about the world. He's talking about the messianic belief and those that he's going to pull out of the messianic belief and make his bride. Remember that Darnell is taken out from amongst the good wheat. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So Darnell is taken out from amongst the, the messianic belief. Not the world. The Darnell's not taken out of Christianity. Christianity, when the people come through from Islam, Christianity, uh, from, from the Jews, when they come in and they become Messianic believers, then they're going to have to go through a process to prove themselves. And proving your love to your loved one is to be totally honest in everything you do and say. Verse 12. In order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth but have delighted in the unrighteousness. So there are going to be many people that are in the messianic belief that are going to delight in being unrighteous. So don't let anyone deceive you. You know what the scripture says. So you don't go against it in your heart. Where? Heart. In the heart, yeah. Right, so we're back to Daniel now, page 592. And it speaks words against the Most High and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High and it intends to change appointed times and the law. That's what we just looked up. No? Or no? D, D. No. Yeah, D. And the law. So we go down to D. And we looked at that. No. 
Challenging the law amounts to lawlessness. Re we read Second Thessalonians, yeah. the lawless one, and the lawlessness which would take over, indeed has already taken over in a set-apart place and is almost about, about Messiah's judgment upon the lawless and also about Messiah's judgment upon the lawless prophets. Matthew 7, 23. Let's go there. So these are the lawless prophets who are going to judge. And it says, And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. So we have a D again there. Go down the bottom. Even though they are doing mighty works in his name and also uh, which says that those doing lawlessness shall be cast into the furnace of fire. Yep. Yeah. And we're back down to... Um, B at the bottom, and we're looking D at the bottom, and we're looking at lawless prophets and lawless believers. Matthew 13 41. These are the lawless believers. So, this is messianic believers. The son of Adam shall send out his messengers and they shall gather out of his reign all the stumbling blocks and those doing lawlessness. So he's going to gather them out of his reign. So these are believers, not Christians, not Muslims, not Jews. These are messianic believers. Yeah. So we have to pass the test, don't we? So there's a little X next to rain. Yeah. Um, and that is, where is it? X. Note, out of his rain, not out of the world. It's not out of the world, it's out of the messianic rain. Yeah. It's yeah. out of his rain. Um, and then the other one. All the stumbling blocks are going to be removed. And that's X. Oh, we said that, didn't we? Why? Why, why? Or uh, all, all the causes of sinning. All the causes of sinning. All the things done to make people sin. So that is... Stumbling blocks. That's going to be taken out from amongst the believers. And those doing lawlessness, Z. <clears throat> lawlessness is the darnel which the devil sowed and sprouts and takes shape in the form of lawless, what? Believers. So in amongst us, Satan is going to sow Lawless believers, they don't care. They're hard as rocks and they're wicked. You've encountered some of those and so is Lou. <coughs> so is Phyllis. Remember, talk about wearing out the saints. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was telling to Phyllis <coughs> not to be afraid and not to worry about what they say because the... They're Darnell, they're wicked, they're evil. <clears throat> and they're pretending to be believers. And this the body needs to know and recognise and not be deceived. <clears throat> not judging anybody but always loving everybody but still understanding not to be deceived. Don't be caught drawn in by them, don't be sucked in and, and fooled because they have delight in doing that. We have to be very, very careful. 
and there's a standard that the people that communicate with us should come up to that standard of love where there's, it's not going to stop. The love is going to keep flowing. It's not going to stop. You're not going to put something out to hurt someone. Yeah? Yeah. Going back to Daniel 7, 26, but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away its rule to cut off and to destroy until the end. And the reign of the rulership and the greatness of the reigns under all the heavens shall be given to the people, the set-apart ones and the Most High. His reign is an everlasting reign and all rulership shall serve and obey him. Hallelujah. This is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, look what happens to him. My thoughts greatly alarmed me and my colour changed. And I kept the matter in my heart. So how concerned is Daniel for these visions? How concerned is he in his, where did he keep the matter? In his heart. In the heart again, see? Mm. But <clears throat> we don't have that concern, do we? No. Mm. You know? We're just airy-fairy about the Messianic believers, some you know, some aren't, but there's some that are airy fairy about it. Don't take it seriously. They don't keep it in their heart. And we can't just go on pretending we're um, a messianic circus and everything's cool because everything's not cool. We're not clean. We have to become clean. Okay, that's the first one, Marky. What do you got to say? What do you think? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, I just, um, the processes of unbelief and daily <coughs> battles you go through yourself, I'm reading it going, oh, you got to check your thoughts while you're reading because I'm thinking, you think to yourself, oh, maybe I'm a Darnell. <laughs> you know? You don't think like that, do you? Oh, well, some days you just go, oh. You're the most humble person Lou's ever met. <laughs> yeah, <but> yes. <laughs> you are, Mark. You are a humble man. I know that. But you don't want to, you, you know, you know you're in there with all your heart. I know you are. You don't want to th think that. Don't think that. You know. You've got a wife and all those kids. You can't think that. Just, mm -hmm. I just mean in your behaviour and the conversations you're having with yourself and with your Husha, you're the and the complaints in your head and things and you, the pressure you feel, you just sort of, yeah, that's all I meant. That's the process, I guess, the standard you're talking about, coming up to the standard. But no one's there yet, mate. No. You know, we've all got to, every one of us have got things we all need to clean out. Mm -hmm. And it's not a shameful thing. It's a joyous thing when when something comes at us for us to look at. We don't go, oh, and get hurt and and take it all in and get upset. You know, it's it's not the way. We embrace it and say, oh, thank you, Father. I didn't see that, and we've got to be honest. After all, it's a marriage. We've got to be real and genuine about everything. You know. And not everyone wants to go there or be that or thinks that it's right. They don't think you, you should be, they call it wearing your heart on your sleeve. Yeah. You know, because someone will cut it off or something. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, um, it's not true. We, we should be real and honest. So people feel that we're genuine. They feel that. We do love them. They can feel it. They love it. But we have to be where we're going to step aside inside and let him come through. And it's him. Yeah? So 
You felt convicted a bit, did you? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you change your mind now and if you embrace it instead of feeling convicted, that's not what he wants you. You're his son. He wants you to embrace what he's saying, you know, and want to change, want to. You can see what he's saying to you. You can hear him, can't you? Yeah. What he wants you to change by reading something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, isn't that wonderful? It's like having a personal trainer, mate. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Let him take it over. You've got a personal trainer there and he's bringing you to the place where he wants you to be. Yeah. But sometimes we have to wait and things have got to stretch out. And we've both stretched out, so we have to shrink. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just things like that. Doing what you're doing uh, can, can bring on a depression. Mm. Speaking from experience, yeah. you know? Oh yeah, it's like the more the more you diet and the more you detox, um, you just think I, I was happier before. Yeah, <laughs> you just think, of course, of course. And you just think I um, like I wasn't healthy or I didn't feel happy, but I just mean in your, it's like coming out of a delusion. You, you're yeah. so, sobering up and sobriety yeah. until you, I think until you're fully sober, which I don't feel yet. It's not. It's not sobering to be sober. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah. it's like you're coming out of a sleep. And okay. This, yeah, this feels like the delusion, and that felt real. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Until it's exactly it. It's exactly what you have to go through. Yeah. That's yeah. the battle you've got to win. Mm. But when you look at what we're experiencing now, you're in Sydney, and I'm up here in Cairns, in Atherton. And we're feeling his spirit in our hearts and the love that we feel is genuine and real and that's a constant. Yeah. Yeah. And I find now that sobriety is better than the other, you know? You um, just open your eyes and start looking around when you're going to work and look at nature a bit and look at people a different way. Yeah. Be willing to love them all. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, everyone's going to hate you. A lot of people hate you because of what you stand for. They can feel his spirit straight away. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to... You can be a little bit incognito and have a bit of fun, then um, get down to the issues after a while. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy the people, but just understand with each person where you're at and then just enjoy them and then just sort of he'll come to you and say, okay, I want you to say this or do that. And so you do it. Mm -hmm. And it's surprising. A lot of people think you're stupid yeah. for living and believing this, but and it's so far away from them. But what do we think about what they're doing? Stupid. We feel sorry for them, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So yeah. always remember where you are, who you are. You know, you're part of the bride. And you're on the way, you can feel that you're going through all this stuff, but it's the cleaning up that you're going through. What you're experiencing, this, um, you know, withdrawals, is cleaning us up. That's great. Embrace it. Embrace the pain and, and be thankful for the pain. You know? Be thankful for the, the trials in your mind. Be, be like that. You can do that. Yeah. No one can stop you. Yeah. And that's the relationship you're in. Mm. Yeah. So we get on to the next one, eh? We got a bit rambling on there. <laughs> so that's good, isn't it? Yeah. That's good to 
He's with us, Mark. He's with us. Yeah. You know, like he was in um, Darwin's, the tabernacle of Darwin. Remember that? Yeah. That blue light in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was with them. His presence, they could see it. He's with us. We can hear him. Judges 19, and this is heart, at page 252. <clears throat> this is pretty gruesome. What chapter? Chapter 19. Oh, sorry. 252. If I read wrong. 252 is chapter 1. Oh. Is it chapter 19? It's chapter 19, sorry. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Got it? Yep. And it came to be in those days when there was no sovereign in Israel that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the further side of the mountains of Ephraim. And he took from himself a for himself a concubine from Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Baeth, in Yehuda. So who would you say this Levite was? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what 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 were the Levites? Lou White. Lou White. <laughs> <laughs> Lou White. <laughs> yeah. What were the Le Levites? What did they do in the tribes of Israel when the tabernacle was there? They just served in the tabernacle. <laughs> they were priests, weren't they? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously this guy. Um, was uh, from that tribe and he was sort of in that type of uh, mindset, obviously trained, but there weren't any any um, uh, a priesthood at that time. Yeah? They're all um, doing what they thought was right. And his concubine committed whoring against him and went away from him to her father's house at Bethlehem in Yehuda, and was there four months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak to her. Huh. What? Yeah. And bring her back. Having his servant and a couple of donkeys with him and she brought him into her father's house. And the father of the young woman saw him, and he was glad to meet him. So what had she done, done to him? She was married to Yeah. She died. Yeah, well, she went whoring, you know. Yeah. Not once, obviously. Mm. And his father-in-law, the young woman's father, detained him, and he dwelt with him three days. And they ate and drank and spent the night there. And it came to be on the fourth day that they arose early in the morning and he prepared to leave. But the young woman's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh your heart with a piece of bread and afterwards go your way. So they sat down and two of them ate and drank together. And the young woman's father said to the man, Please agree to stay all night and let your heart be glad. And when the man arose to go, his father-in-law urged him, so he spent the night there again. And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to go. But the young woman's father said, please refresh your heart. So they delayed until afternoon, and both of them ate. And the man arose to go, he and his concubine and his servant, but his father-in-law the young woman's father said to him, See, the day is now drawing toward evening. Please spend the night. See that the day is coming to an end. Stay here and let your heart be glad. 
and you shall rise early tomorrow for your journey and you shall go to your tent. So for his heart's sake, the father obviously here wants this man to have his heart relieved and he felt so guilty about what his daughter had done. Do you think? Yeah, I guess so. So he's trying to help the man's heart, remembering that the heart in the body, because that's what we're looking at, aren't we? We're looking at all the parts of the body. And you've got the rib cage, and that's protecting the heart. You've got your arms in front to protect again if anything happens. So we're looking at the body and what the heart is. The heart is desperately wicked and evil above all things. But when Yahushua comes in, it's circumcised. And all the past that we've done is gone. But we can still be invaded, can't we? Mm. Satan can still invade us if we don't store the word in there, if we don't keep the word and say no and start living and exercising and being this way and instead of just letting stuff go in and out, in and out, in and out, just wearing us out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know where I was up to now. Uh, ten. Ten. But the man would not stay that night, and he arose and left and came to a place opposite Yebus, that is, Jerusalem. And with him were the two saddled donkeys and his concubine with them. They were near Yebus, and the day was far spent. And the servant said to his master, Come, please, let us turn aside into this city of the Yebusites, and um, spend the night in it. And his master said to him, Let us not turn aside here into a city of foreigners who are not of the children of Israel, but we shall pass over to Gibba. Gibba. So he wants to be with his own people. So he doesn't want to go in, into a city where there's foreigners. He wants to go into a city where he knows he will be treated correctly and given the right service because that's what the brothers did for each other, yeah? Like it should be today. Yeah. 13. And he said to his servant, Come let us draw near to one of these places and spend the night in Gibba or in Rama. And they passed over and went their way, and the sun went down on them near Gibba, which which belongs to Benjamin. Benjamin. So that's the Benjamin, I think they say. That's the uh, house of Benjamin. That's one of, of the tribes, mm. right? And Gibba is one of the towns that are in one of the tribes of Benjamin. Bin Benjamin. Yeah, You're getting the process. Yeah. And they turned off there to go in to spend the night in Gibba. So he went in and he sat down in the open square of the city for no one would take them into his house to spend the night, which is most unusual for the belief system. Mm. So something's happening in Gibba, isn't it? Mm. But see, an old man came in from his work in the field at evening who also was from the mountains of Ephraim, and he was sojourning in Gibba, whereas the men in the place were Benjamites. <clears throat> right? And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw the traveller in the open square of the city. And the old man said, Where are you going? And where do you come from? And he said to him, We are passing over from Bethlehem in Yehuda to the other side of the mountains of Ephraim. I am from there, and I went to Beth. Bethlehem in Yehuda, and I am going to the house of Yahuwah, but there is no one taking me into his house. So he's a bit of, a, mute, a bit taken back that the hospitality, true hospitality, brotherly hospitality isn't being shown. He's a bit taken back. Mm. Yet there is both straw and fodder for our donkeys and bread and wine for myself and for my your female servant and for the young man who is with your servant. There is no lack of any matter. 
So everything like that's been given to them. Mm. The old man said, peace be with you. However, let all your needs be on me. Only do not spend the night in the open square. So this old fella knows something's, you know, the vampires come at night in the open square. <laughs> Something goes on in the open square at night. And he brought him into his house and gave fodder to the donkeys and they washed their feet and ate and drank. They were, see, this is all happening. This is how it should be. And it was free. They were ma- oh, you can probably pay him something. They were making their hearts glad. They're what? Glad? Hearts. And see, all of a sudden, men of the city, city sons of Belial, surrounded the house, beating on the door. And they spoke to the master of the house and the old man saying, bring out the man who came to your house so that we may know him, in other words, have sex with him. And this is the tribe of Benjamin. This is believers. Can you associate this with the other scripture we went through? The Daniel? Yeah. So in amongst the believers, here it is again. But the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said, No, my brothers, I beg you, do no evil. Since this man has come into my house, do not do this folly. How wicked is this? Look, here is my maiden daughter and the man's concubine. Let me bring them out now and humble them and do with them what is good in your eyes. But do not do a foolish matter to this man. But the men would not listen to him, so the man the man took his concubine and brought her out to them. And they knew her and rolled themselves on her all night until morning. She was repeatedly raped and let her go when the day began to break. So even though she did wrong, she's getting wrong back done to her. So she's knowing what it would feel like, how he would feel. And as morning appeared, the woman came back and fell down at the door of the man's house where her master was, till it was light. And her master rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way and saw his concubine fallen at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. And he said to her, rise up and let let us go. But there was no answer. Then he took her on the donkey and the man rose and went to his place. Imagine that happening to your wife. It's horrendous. And he came into the house and took a knife, then laid hold of his concubine and cut her up limb by limb into 12 pieces and sent them and sent her throughout all the borders of Israel. And it came to be that all who saw it said, this has never been and there has not been and there has not been seen the like of this from the day that the children of Israel came up from the land of Mithraim until this day. Set your heart on it, take counsel and speak up. So they want to find out who did it, do they? Well, they go on in the next couple of chapters. Mm. It talks about um, they had a meeting at Jerusalem. They all met up there and they they wanted to come down and um, punish Gibba, the town Gibba where they stayed. And the rest of um, Benjamin, the tribe, stood up against them. Mm. And they fought. They had this battle. And, of course, Israel, again, won, but then Benjamin was kicked out of the brotherhood, uh, kicked out of the tribes. And there's a whole lot of other stories going on about what does actually happen in the end. It's worth reading if you want to have a look, but I don't think we've got enough time tonight to go through all that. 
But the point, I just looked up those two things, and they're the next two on the list. That's 28 and 29, ribs and heart. And we get this story, these two stories. And both of them come in and tell us about the Darnell that's sown in amongst. They had to destroy the, the hearts of the men that sinned, that were lawless and unrighteous. That had, Israel had to be cleansed of that sin. That's why, that's why Israel came to destroy those people in Gibeah who were part of the tribe of Benjamin. But Benjamin stood up against them. You know, and of course, there's a whole other story in that again, but um, we're not going into that. Just the fact about the heart, how the situation of the heart is, and the heart of Israel that was in the, in the heart, that was in the heart of the whole lot of Israel. And they were all aghast that something so dreadful could happen. You know, they were all aghast at it. So they got together to do something about it, you know, because the heart of Israel had to be cleansed. And it's no different today. The heart of Israel has to be cleansed. And we come in in an imperfect state. When we come into the body, we're in an imperfect state and we're here to be cleansed and made perfect. But that's not going to happen till the end when we change. But we're working through all our life, all the circumstances in everyone's life, all the play is to bring us to cleaner and cleaner and cleaner, to take out the wrinkles and the spots. And the body worldwide needs to know that this is the process, that we have to pass the test by giving ourselves to him to become a living sacrifice, not to want to live a life that we want because that goes nowhere. That doesn't do anything in the plan of Yahushua. But to give over, give up the world, give over and just want to live for him and serve him. And that's a behaviour and that's a knowledge and that's a wisdom that's attainable as we move on up the path. But we have to be willing to be that sacrifice. That's why we've got immersed so we would be, come a living sacrifice, a vessel that he can use instead of Satan's Darnell. We don't want to be used like Satan's Darnell. And the believers have to know that that Darnell is sown in amongst us. The wickedness, the worst wickedness, the most evil, evil in the world is sown into the messianic belief. And that's what's going on. That's why all this trouble is happening. And we need to understand that among, among us is Darnell. And we need not to be concerned or worried or hurt by it or upset or take offence. We need to just realise Ah, oh, that's Darnell. Yeah? That's amazing. Well, that's the study for tonight, brothers and sisters. It's been so lovely to share this word with you. I hope it's a blessing to your hearts and I hope that you'll see and understand and move on in this process without worry, fear, or hurt, because it's not meant to hurt us, it's meant to clean us. Mm. <clears throat> Good night, everybody, and thank you. So bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs>